How's it going, everybody? C Red TV back here in our video. So, of course, it's the NFL draft season, which means it's time to start the NFL draft previews. So, of course, um, there's a lot of previews I'm gonna be going over the cut next few weeks. So, yeah, this will be fun to do. So, yeah, we the cut the Lions, they got a lot of needs and they got a lot of holes to fill up in the draft. So, yeah, for this draft preview, we're going to be taking a look at the top quarterback prospects in the draft since quarterback is still a need for the Lions at the to paint off the Lions want to rock with Jared Goff or they want to rock with somebody else. So we're going to take a look at some cop QB prospects here to see who I think would be a good option for the Lions to be possibly become the new successor for Matt Stafford. So yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. Now the Lions, I don't know if they go QB at two, but hit definitely number 32 could be an option too unless the Lions want to trade up, but Let's, anyway, let's jump right into it. So the first player we're going to go over here, hailing out of pit, standing 6'3", weighing 220 pounds, we got Kenny Pickett. So for Kenny, he's your prototype reading defense as QB, so he's very good at reading the defense pretty well. So for Kenny's strengths, um, he keeps his eyes downfield when he's pressured, but he won't shy away from using his legs to pick up the yardage. Very natural thrower on the run. Doesn't hinder his accuracy. His ball placement took a tremendous leap from 2020 to 2021. He feels for pressure. It's polished. His internal clock is good. He has a smart decision maker. Won't force throws when he doesn't have leverage. Has incredible toughness in the pocket. And he's, as a runner, he's had 20 career rushing TDs in his college career. Um, he's confident. He raises the level of those around him. He believes he's never out of a game. In terms of his weaknesses, though... His setup to release quickness, it needs to speed up as a pro. He has a small hand size, which is abnormally rare for an NFL QB. Well, I guess rarely happens with his hand size. Um, He's only had one year of high-level tape. He was a late bloomer relative to others in this QB class. Um, He can attack tight windows with accuracy. His arm is sufficient by NFL standards. He's not a standout trait, but which is a concern when it's overconfidence enters the equation. In terms of an NFL comparison, he's been compared to Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals. And we all know how good Joe Burrow is, so... I don't know, could Kenny Pickett be the next Joe Burrow in this class? Maybe. Uh, for the Lions, um, I want to go for him at number two, because this QB class is pretty weak, but... Maybe at number 32 if he falls that far? I don't know, I think the Lions want to have a chance at him in the, in the first round. They're probably going to have to trade up from 32 to have a chance. I mean, if the Lions trade down, then I probably want to be against it. But the problem is, though, if the Lions trade down, then whoever trades up is probably taking a QB. But yeah, maybe someone to keep an eye on for sure. So the next QB we're going to go over here, hailing out of Nevada, standing 6'4", weighing 226 pounds. We got Carson Strong. So Carson, he's your prototype accuracy QB, so he's very accurate throwing a football. Turns his strength some. He has a quick hit and tight release that gets the ball out with urgency. Packs plenty of arm talent with the fifth row. So natural windows can drive the ball downfield. He throws with sip, can beat the zone with touch. He's efficient at speeding up his process, delivering the short game and under pressure. Has good anticip anticipatory thrower. He's a smart decision maker, works through progressions on time. Has an internal clock and pressure gauge. They're both functional. He's impressive attacking leverage. Um... In terms of weaknesses, though, he lacks the athleticism to extend place with his legs and went outside the pocket, so he's not really a scrambler QB or a mobile one. Um, his upper body mechanical issues, it seems to be the root of occasional bouts with inaccuracy. He's not a small player, doesn't have the balance and strength to power through contact in the pocket. Um, too often he gets tunnel vision and misses lurking safeties and linebackers, so he has to work on that. In terms of his NFL comparison... He's been compared to now retired NFL quarterback Carson Palmer. So, yeah, he definitely has some upside for sure. Um, he would definitely be in play maybe at number 32. The Lions, if they want to have a shot at him, they might get him at 32. They might have to trade up. You know, we'll have to see. But, yeah, definitely someone to keep an eye on for sure. Now, the next QB we're going to go over here. This is a QB a lot of Lions fans have been looking at recently. Hailing out of Liberty. Yeah! Standing six feet tall, weighing 220 pounds, we got Malik Willis. So for Malik, he's your prototype arm strength QB, so he a, has a very strong arm. That was one of the things that stood out for Matt Stafford was arm strength, so definitely 
arm strength. That's something to definitely keep an eye on. So um, in terms of Malik Willis' strength, um, he's a strong and physical imposing runner. Can break tackles and create on yardage. He's a natural thrower. Can shift arm slots and slip through pass linemen. He's instinctive when he feels the pressure and can adjust to it. His deep ball time and his placement, they're impressive. Chris Pastor on, on rollouts can switch into running mode at any moment. His arm isn't rare, but he has the velocity to hit most throws in the NFL. In terms of his weaknesses, um, too often he gets stuck looking for the big plays that aren't there rather than taking advantage of options underneath. So, yeah, he might try and force a big play, which could get intercepted or brought back. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, he needs to throw more with more consistent anticipation. Um, too often he looks for cutbacks as a runner instead of taking what's given to him. Um, oh, he allows moments of havoc to overtake him and make mistakes. Um, in 2021, he threw 12 interceptions, and most of those mistakes when he come by him trying to create magic in unwinnable places. So yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, in terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Jalen Hurts of the Philadelphia Eagles. So yeah, Hurt, Malik Willis, he definitely has some upside for sure, but I know a lot of people are talking about taking him at the number two pick. Um, you know where I stand with that. In terms of number two pick, hell no. Malik Willis is not worth the second overall pick. Now, if the Lions trade down from number two and get him, then I probably wouldn't be too pissed about it, but someone to keep an eye on, but I would not take him at number two. But if the Lions trade down, then whoever's trading up, it's probably, with the Lions, it's probably going to take Malik Willis. That's the thing. But yeah, something to keep an eye on for sure. It's something that could decide what the Lions do at number two, if they're going to trade down or not. It really depends on if the Jaguars take Aiden Hutchinson number one, if the Jaguars actually be smart and take an offensive lineman. A lot hinges on that first overall pick with Jacksonville. So yeah, it, something to keep an eye on for sure. So the final QB, the final player we're going to talk about in this video, we got Halen out of Ole Miss, standing 6'2", weighing 205 pounds. We got Matt Carl. So Matt Coral, he's your setup, release, tip prototype setup and release QB. So <clears throat> in terms of his strengths, um, his release motion is tight and whip-like, uh, and the ball jumps right out of his hand. He's able to rifle passes in a tough leverage situation over in the middle of the field. Has a natural feel for pressure. Can swiftly slide out of danger. Um, his decisions improved from 2020 to 2021. He has improved with taking measured risk. Um, he's a smart runner. Won't put himself in unnecessary danger. Um, he'll fight for needed needed yardage. Uh, plus, plus his athlete. He's an athlete who can win as a scrambler. Um, he possesses good instincts and has good reaction quickness. Um, he, in terms of weaknesses, um. He can get too reliant on his legs to make a play. Gets tunnel vision too often. His ball placement and control can take a dive when he's under pressure. He's still learning how to layer his throws over linebackers. They can deliver with NFL starter touch. His tendency to pull his release. Late in the motion. The leads to random misfires. He's not a consistent anticipatory passer. Eh. Um, in terms of his NFL comparison. He's being compared to Zach Wilson of the New York Jets. So yeah, Matt Matt Coral, he definitely has some upside for sure. I think he's definitely someone that could be in play for number 32. Lions, if they want him, they might have to trade up for him if you buy a few picks from number 32. To be perfectly honest, I don't see the Lions staying at 32 in the draft. I think they're going to trade up from 32, to be perfectly honest. Either that or trade down one to two. I don't think they're picking at 32. I think they're going to make a trade for that with that pick. But yeah, Coral, definitely something to keep an eye on for sure. But yeah, anyway, that'll wrap it up here for this NFL Draft Preview. So yeah, quite a few interesting QB prospects to keep an eye on for sure. But I'll say one thing about these prospects. None of them are worth the second overall pick. Not a single one. The only one that might be close to even being worth it is maybe Kenny Pickett, and that's about it. Or Malik Willis, but neither of them are the number two overall pick. Like, to be perfectly honest, for this QB class... This QB class is pretty fucking weak. Like, this class is pretty weak. Like, the only QBs worth a damn in the first round are probably Kenny Pickett and maybe Malik Willis. That's about it. I'll say, though, of 2023's NFL draft class, that class is a QB class. There's a lot more talented QBs in that class than this one. But anyway, that'll wrap it up here. That will be the start of the NFL draft previews that go all the way until mid to late April. 
And I believe the the coup de grace for this will be I will do a full 32 team NFL round one mock draft for the first round by the end of all this. So yeah, anyway, I'll wrap it up here. And that's all I gotta say. Hope everyone's a great day and I'll see you on whatever I make next. Peace.